So today I'm going to be giving a little tutorial on how to use HitFilm Express. I can assure that it's one of those things that once you know how to use it, you know how to use it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here uh, is we're going to go to New and we're going to create a composite shot. Now, you're going to want to create a composite shot if you wish to really move anything around and, well, composite really. So this is for a very short map part I'm doing here that's only around five seconds long. So I'm just going to make a five second long composite shot. And this is where you choose your width, height, frame rate, aspect ratio, and your te you can also have a template. So there's just like, this is just a much easier way to do it. And you can just name it. So I'm just going to name it after the map part that I'm doing. I'm just going to press OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my audio, which is conveniently right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this in my timeline. To do this, I simply just drag it and plop it down. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to um, go here and make sure I crop it again to be the right size. So just remember that if at any point you want to make your shot longer, you just go to this little settings button down here. Now, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and go over some of the basics of the software. So here we have our viewer, and you can also see the individual layer, which you might want to do when you have multiple layers. You can choose the quality that you play back in over here, how big it is, and then here we've got the regular select button, the hand, which you just use to move around your frame, a text tool, um, rectangular mask, I don't actually use these things, so... Honestly, don't quote me on these. I might try and learn them so I can make a video on those in the future. Then here we've got uh, the same buttons, but this one is for um, scrolling along the timeline and a clip tool, which you can use to clip things, you know. And then this thing, which I'm not even gonna talk about. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of my frames and I'm gonna individually drag them into the timeline. Okay, so now I've also got this little image here with uh, Thorne's great dad. And we're just going to have him kind of slide in in the background. So we can find this, trim this, and then we can go ahead and have him just kind of slide up. And what we're going to do is this introduction to keyframes. So keyframes they work like they would in any other software if you've used After Effects this is very easy <laughs> so we're just going to use position and opacity keyframes so I'm just going to place my first position keyframe a little bit lower and then I'm only going to have him get to the top at the end so at this point he should be around zero zero uh, it film does this annoying thing where when you're on the last frame of a scene it goes to it shows you the next scene and it's pretty annoying so let me just go a bit higher than zero zero and then what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to make it so that only here is he 100% capacity and at the start he's zero. Oh my geez this is exploding my computer now it's paused yeah okay There we go, that's fine. So once you've got your shot, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab everything in it. So including the background, uh, which I didn't trim. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, let's trim the background. So once you've got everything in our shot, we're going to select all of it by just pressing shift click over everything. And then you're going to go here and you're going to create another composite shot. And we're just going to call this S1. And all of a sudden, all of that stuff goes into a separate composite shot. And now we can go to this one, and it's just one little thing on the timeline. Now this is especially helpful if you're someone who needs to make a lot of shots. Because otherwise the software will explode. And no, you didn't need to do that little thing there where I trimmed it. As long as it's only for the right amount of time, like, you know. Okay. That didn't make any sense. What the heck is wrong with me? Okay. So you can go ahead and just close this 
and if you want to open it up again you just double click on where it is in the main timeline there you go pretty simple and then you can also just do things like if you wanted to have a transition with the whole thing you could do this but personally i have my transitions with imovie because i don't actually know why i do that but i just do something that i haven't mentioned about hitfilm yet is all of these effects now some of the effects that show up are ones that are add-ons but lots of them are free for example here we've got all these blurs that are free and then just one that's paid and all of the paid packs are not expensive i uh, just want to let y'all know that and of course this is a free version of a paid program so the paid program you'll probably get all of that stuff i'm assuming so um, if we go into number two we can start work on the scene so we're just going to stretch out this and we're once again going to do our little keyframe adding now we're going to go to the me like that and now i'm just going to There we go, and now we've got another shot of Dad, and like how we did before, I'm simply going to go ahead and have his position just go up a bit over the course of the thing. There we go. And ba -da -ba -da, there we go. And once again, I'm just going to crop that off here. And then, like we did before, I'm just going to go ahead and create a composite shot. I'm just going to call this S2. We're going to create it. We're going to close it. We're going to go here. We're going to work out how long it is. And then we're just going to snip off the excess bits just so that it makes it easier to see. Okay, so what we're next going to be doing is the tween scene. Now, this is the one that is going to get a little complicated so and if, i mean this might already be complicated to some people so that's pretty scary i'm very sorry about that so here we have all of my images for the tweening and i'm just going to go ahead and start by placing them on one by one now what i'm going to go do is i'm going to name everything one at a time uh, to make it less complicated for me. This is going to get a bit complicated, so please stand by. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab everything here, again, shift click, and this right here is your good old anchors. And this will do a thing, so we're just going to press this and then we're going to press head. And we're also going to press head, and then on head, we're going to press body. Now, what does this do? It means that all of this is anchored to the head. So when I move the head, this all moves with it. So if I grab the head and do anything with it, like make it bigger, oh, Jesus, that's terrifying. And also I'm a complete idiot because I need to also anchor the ears to the head. I'm a dumb person. Okay. Yeah. So if I just grab the head and do anything with it, like rotate it or anything, everything will move with it. This is very helpful if you are an animation memer and you want to make some head bobs, you know? This is what you need. <laughs> so, we're going to start off by making the head uh, rise. So, we're just going to go to the end, create a keyframe, go to the beginning, and move the head down, and that will create a keyframe there. And also, yeah, this is something quite important. The keyframes are created automatically. You don't have to press this button this button will if you press it again after creating your first keyframe it'll remove all the keyframes and that's still something that i sometimes accidentally get wrong so be careful about that so now we've done all of this our head rises and that's very simple but what if we want to make these ears rotate so we're going to go onto the ear and transform and if we go to rotate it oh geez there's a bit of a problem there it's not rotating right <laughs> So in order to do this, we're going to have to create an anchor point. To create the anchor point, you just want to move the ear so that the place of movement is in this little crosshair right here in the middle of the screen. So you're just going to move it roughly there. Normally, if I was like doing some hardcore tweening, I would hide the things, which you can hide everything by pressing these little eye icons here, like the eyebrows. 
Um, so now we're just going to go ahead and move it back to its original position by using the position. Also, you might notice that when I am moving stuff, I'm dragging these little numbers down here. The reason I do this as opposed to dragging it on the canvas is that you can't lock layers, meaning that when you drag anything on the canvas, it probably won't actually grab what you want it to grab. Uh, this is a feature lots of people are asking for and sadly still hasn't been added. Uh, hopefully it will get added because it's very annoying and it means I can't like freehand drag stuff around on this. I have to use these little buttons, but I've gotten used to it and you probably will too. So now once the ear is lined up, we're going to create our first rotation keyframe. And I'm just going to move the ear a little bit down, go to the end, move it a little bit up. So I'm just going to make this 14. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we've got 714, minus 714 even. Okay, so now we're going to go to the right ear and we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're first we're going to create our anchor point just around where the ear should join up. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be roughly in the area you want to rotate from. Uh, please keep that in mind. Also, I just realized the position on the left ear is not right <laughs> hold on maybe you can see the little thing the little, the little ear fold i don't freaking know what it's called okay and now uh, we can rotate this one and the anchor point's still a little off i just need to drag it out a bit maybe yeah it can it can take some getting used to um anchor pointing everything i'm just gonna move the position in a bit and now we're going to create our first rotation keyframe. And once, uh, like, we're going to do the opposite. So that they rotate perfectly, we're just going to do the opposite. So here it's going to be 7, 14, whereas on the other it was minus 7 plus 14. So minus 14, and there we go. Now the ears both move together. Now, to add a bit more of a bit more realistic movement, we're also going to change the fluff, which is on the side of the cheeks. We're only going to do a little bit here because otherwise it will ruin everything. So we're just going to move the fluff down a little bit by just creating position keyframes. Very simple. You should probably have got the hang of it by now. Okay, now we're going to do the hair. So here we're just going to create a rotation. <laughs> oh, jeez. I meant to anchor it first. So once again, we're going to anchor it by dragging it so that it's on here. Positioning it up. And on this thing, and then adding the rotation keyframes. So I'm just going to have this like lift up as he talks. I'm going to have it lift up and then I'm going to have it like settle a bit. Your wig flew off. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, I think I'm going to make it a bit less dramatic. Now. Okay, there we go. Now it looks okay. So now we're just going to do the muzzle. So once again, we're just going to be creating very basic position going up except one thing I do want to do here is actually move it to one side because I do genuinely think I drew it a bit of off sided so minus 18 there we go I think that looks better I just realised the muzzle's underneath the eyes that's a problem let's just fix that okay there we go so then we've got these little crowns here and what we're just going to do with these is they're going to kind of flash in the eyes. So we're going to start at zero basically. And then they're going to disappear. There we go. Um, so that looks to be everything. Now the final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the whole body move up a bit over the course of the thing. So I'm just going to have this position keyframe here and then another one down a bit. And there we go. Uh, oh, I should also raise the eyebrows. Let's do that quickly, okay? So once again, creating a position keyframe, 
creating another position keyframe. There we go, that's everything tween. So I've also got one little background decoration that I'm just going to kind of throw in here. And I think I'm just going to have that kind of just move up over the course of the thing like this. No, I didn't actually create the keyframes. What a dumbo. Dump. There we go. And there we go. That's a almost finished map part. So now to export, go to file, export contents. Now, this to many people also I need to actually just go ahead. Boop. Okay, so <laughs> this to many people look like nonsense. Now here you'll have a lot of built-in presets. Now I've selected mine to be YouTube 1080. There's also things like GoPro, just a bunch of random things. And YouTube is probably what I'd recommend if you're making a map part because YouTube, um, you can choose the presets down here. There's a bunch of different ones. And there we go. And it'll say where it'll output it to. And there we go. Now we're just going to press start exporting, which is down here. So here we can see where it's exported, which is in my HitFilm Express exports folder. This will get added just randomly to your documents on your computer. You can just search for it to find it. And this is where all your exported shots will go. Please ignore all of this complete mess. Look, you can see how many different times I exported um, that one map part. So here we go. There we go, there's the finished part. How uh, ah, except for me, that's not personally finished because I will then go into iMovie where I'll add my final transitions, etc, etc. So I hope this was a fairly useful tutorial on HitFilm. Uh, this really is only useful if you're making map parts. If not, then I'm not sure where you even watch this. Uh, because that's what I do, so that's what I would be able to teach. Uh, HitFilm is a pretty good software. And it's definitely the best free editing software that I've used. So yeah, I honestly could not recommend it enough. It's really good. <laughs>